right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Scorpio season. This is episode 14 of our Heartbeat to Go podcast, Challenges and Transformations. And today's episode, we're going to talk about shadow work. We're going to talk about the astrology for Scorpio season and some of the themes of Scorpio season. So we're changing it up a little bit um, moving forward. But Kumbi, why don't you start just giving us, you know, a little bit of a background on Scorpio and some of the themes and things to expect for this season. And then we can talk more about shadow work. Yeah, I think that, okay, so we're totally switching it up. We definitely want to talk about the shadow work challenge Mm -hmm. that we did last year. And we're going to review some of that again, because we were just looking at that and just talking about how great it is Mm -hmm. (laughs) and how we probably all need to be doing this on a more regular (laughs) basis. And, um, and then, yeah, so I'll just go over some of the general astrology and the astrological themes for Scorpio season, as well as, um, Also remind everybody that we do a weekly astrology um, informational preview um, every Monday at five o'clock on IG Live that's always posted on our feed as well. Mm -hmm. So on the Heartbeat House and the Heartbeat to Go um, accounts. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to just preface that by saying that there's so much more astrology, like, it, like the thing with astrology, it's just like with yoga, it's just like probably any sort of contemplative practice is that the more you get into it, the more you know that there is, the more there is to know, mm-hmm. and the more like nuances and specifics and et cetera. So, uh, so this monthly one, I'm more envisioning it to be kind of just like a general, very almost like a beginnering mm-hmm. beginner style over overview Mm -hmm. and then um and on the weekly we'll kind of maybe be able to get more into the um specifics and the nuances of stuff great although Mm -hmm. i probably won't we'll get into some specifics (laughs) so um so okay so we know for so this is just in general um some of the astrological themes for scorpio season but then we'll also talk about specifically for 2022 for this upcoming scorpio season So, um, because every year it's different, Mm -hmm. but the themes are always the same for Scorpio and, um, and so, yeah, so just off the top of my head, we should, I should have probably pulled up that preview, um, the overview thing that we have Mm -hmm. on the online studio, but off the top of my head, what I know Mm -hmm. for Scorpio is that, uh, the main thing about Scorpio is about transformation and it's about shadow work. It's about looking at the things that are buried underneath the surface, Mm -hmm. things that are usually non-physical things that are the unseen, the energetics, the things that, um, the, what's really going on versus mm-hmm. like what we actually can just see, right, you know? Right. So as they say like that, our conscious mind is only, is only about 10% of our entire like actual consciousness and everything else is in our subconscious or buried in our unconscious. Mm-hmm. So, um, think about the shadow or the themes that come up during Scorpio season being all of that unconscious, which mm-hmm. is like what? 90%. <laughs> so it's yeah. a lot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but we're talking about transformation. We're talking about deep, deep, like, deep, uh, emotional stuff, deep psychological stuff. You know, Scorpio is ruled by the planet Pluto and Pluto represents the underworld. They mm-hmm. say, you know, the, um, and the underworld, so it can sound kind of spooky and, and it's cool that Halloween is during this time too. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some sort of like mythology that is, um, around that that's tied to Halloween, mm-hmm. but, um, <clears throat> Uh, so it's about this deep transformation and looking at things, um, really, really like underneath, like, like below the surface, like looking at what might be ruling our unconscious, looking at, um, what are the things that we don't want to look at as far as the shadow sides of ourselves Mm -hmm. or the parts of ourselves that have to do with, I was just recently talking about core wounds, which are, um, you know, about like shame or guilt or, um, embarrassment or, um, you know, or like repression or denial, like the things that are just like, we just don't even want to, um, they're in our unconscious for a reason. (laughs) We're like unwilling to look at, you know, like we don't want to look at. So the uncomfortable and, you know, and all that kind of like the dark side. Yes. Yeah. But the dark side being the good side. The good side. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I also think, you know, shadow work is, 
sometimes like you know how they say everyone's a mirror <laughs> and yes. so it's kind of like how you get triggered by somebody that can be an indication of something that's going on in you with your shadow but it can also be like the good stuff too right Absolutely. like everybody's like a yes. reflection of like the quote bad as well as the good or the potential that we have inside of ourselves yes too. yes yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's it all. Yeah, I think it's definitely it gets a bad rap as being like the negative qualities or the things that we don't want to look at. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it can also just be like things that you're just not like totally aware of that are great. Right. right. <laughs> or like the potential in like what you see in someone else can be like something that you can can you know, cultivate inside of yourself if, if you're willing to work through like all of the blocks within your shadow. Right. right? So yeah. Like, yeah. Like that's yeah. what, that's what shadow work reveals to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, do we want to maybe go over some of the other themes that we talk about on our IG lives as far as the diet and exercise? And yeah, I mean, you know, I will say that it's a, um, it's a fixed water sign, so it's de it's like one of those that's like very kind of um, like it's a stuck, you know, kind of energy. You know, it's like this yeah. is it's like a very like um, I would say fixed signs are harder signs to um, avoid in a way. Mm, <laughs> like yeah. they're just it's like that like that that theme that whatever it is is like very um, like fixed energy. Like it's like it's difference between cardinal energy, which is like very like a, a, like a rush of like action or initiation of something, the beginning of something. And then mutable energy is very um, like a little bit wishy washy and can just be kind of like, you know, um, less like harder to identify where fixed feels very like solid in that sign mm -hmm. or in that element, you know, mm -hmm. so the element of water. Yeah. So, and water represents our emotions. Water represents emotional energy and, um, and emotional healing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the way that emotions can either really work for you or if you don't allow for them, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, like emotions are almost like a child in a way. It's like if you're not going to pay attention to them, then then you're gonna it's you're gonna feel the repercussions of that later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that yeah. makes sense as no, far as I've, parenting. I've but. heard um, Byron Katie talk about that before too, where it's mm. like like emotions or even thoughts. They're just like a child, kind of like pulling at your you yeah. know yeah. at your shirt, and uh -huh. it's just like they just want your attention. And it's like as soon as you kind of can turn to them, give them your attention, it's like they sort of have the power to let go of you versus like you letting go of them. But it's just like they keep coming up until yeah, they're addressed. Exactly. So we have to look at them. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Yeah. So we have that it being a fixed water sign. Um, it's happening, you know, at the end of October and most of November. Um, it is about the underworld being the ruled by the planet Pluto. Mm -hmm. So um, and and Pluto is kind of in a way about this death and rebirth cycle, mm -hmm. <coughs> which is why that theme of transformation is um is so key with shadow and scorpio but um the that whole theme or that cycle of like death and rebirth is not super comfortable so i think that's yeah. what makes it uh such you know kind of like a like as more what do they call it malefic type of a sign you know yeah. where um yeah, it's it's like change and transformation and death and those phases of death and rebirth are really, really, really challenging. Yeah, yeah. But completely, as always, in a good way. In a good way, and yeah. for a good reason. Right. And there's so much opportunity, you know, in it. Right. So I'm almost wondering. Okay, so if like if Scorpio represents the shadow, you know how you talk about how there's like like the positive yeah. of each side and then there's a shadow of yeah. each side. So what would be like the, the gift of the gift and then the shadow of Scorpio? Well, the shadow of Scorpio is just like, is just what we were talking about as far as it being uncomfortable, yeah. it being, you know, maybe scary, it being, um, filled with fear, you know, it can yeah. be, um, also just, the shadow of Scorpio can be uh, manipulative, you know, it can be um, like dark, it could be, it can be, I mean, it's like the shadow is the shadow, yeah. right? The like shadow you're not willing to look at it, is the shadow. The stuff that keeps coming up yeah. in like the negative way in your life. Exactly. Right, right. So there's, so yeah, so the shadow, meaning like the shadow of our subcon of our unconscious 
would be the shadow of Scorpio. Yeah. Right? right. But the gift of Scorpio is that is, is transformation. Right. Is change, is rebirth, is getting down to more of our authentic self, mm -hmm. is figuring out why we are the way that we are, is enlightenment, is awakening. You know, there's mm -hmm. such a, it's so extreme what the gift in the shadow of Scorpio is. So, yeah, if we can focus on the gift of it, then it's almost like whatever you need to get through to get to that gift of awakening, of being more conscious, of being, of knowing yourself better, then it's always worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Like no matter what, it, it will be worth it. Just like, it's also, it's also like if we think about death and rebirth, like think about life being like birth, like the birth of like our existence or the light of our consciousness and death being that transformation into something different, whether it's reincarnation or whether it's some, some other type of afterlife, then, um, then that's, you know, then that's like, that is the phase of, I mean, that's like the purpose, you know, yeah. that's the purpose of what we're doing. Like that's the purpose of living is to be trans is to transform. Right. So you think about like a plant or something, you know, if it just stays a seed, it's going to eventually die. If it just stays like a, a seedling, it's going to eventually die. Like it needs to mature. It needs to grow. It needs to, you know, continue, um, onward and upward. Like that is the, that is what is about this material plane, about this physical life is that everything is constantly changing. Everything changes, yeah. So, and everything is constantly changing, but, and then you can say like, is it growing or is it not growing? I mean, it's just constant. Everything is constantly changing. So you might as well grow. Right. You right. know? And I think that's the beauty of Scorpio too, is it allow it, it helps you get out of the stuckness. You yeah, know? Like exactly. It's, it's the thing that's going to force you to look at yourself, to get out of that. Because personally, I know I've stayed in cycles like longer than I, probably needed to. Um, but it's, it's forcing us to look inside of ourselves and get out of that, like repeating loop. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. It's yeah. And it's so funny because you think about it being a fixed sign. So it's like keeping you in that, keeping you out, keeping you in that phase of like constantly coming out of being stuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. like you're not going to be able to <laughs> right. avoid it. Right. You know, like that's what this is about. You know, yeah. this is it's fixed in that that's what it's doing. Right, right. So um we can fight it as much as we want. Yeah. It'll just be more painful if we don't work with it. Exactly. Work with the energy of it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it's like the difference between, um, swimming upstream and downstream. Oh yeah. Like the current is there. It's consistent, you know, it's moving. Right. Right. So are you going to, you know, fight, like expend a lot of energy fighting against it, standing against it and not really either moving backwards or being still or really slowly, slowly moving forward? Or are you going to just turn around and just, you know, go with it? Go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, I know that there's like eclipses coming up during this season. Right. Too, okay. So, yeah. So, really so other than, um, so I guess we'll talk about some of the other stuff yeah. as far as like what's, what recommendations or what would be, um, things to do and focus on during like on, yeah. on a day to day during Scorpio season. But, um, but yes, so the astrology for this year's Scorpio season is pretty big mm -hmm. and it's pretty big because. Yes, eclipse season is upon us. It's happening in the, at the next new moon will be the partial solar eclipse. And then we have a f total uh, lunar eclipse uh, at the end of October, I believe. Wait, I have to look at my notes. Um, it's at the end of October or the beginning of November. Total lunar eclipse. Oh, sorry. It's the lunar eclipse uh, in Taurus, full moon in Taurus on November 8th. So the solar eclipse is on October 25th. So these are huge because um, eclipses are considered portal ways of change and transformation where things get sped up times a hundred or times a thousand. Um, and the fact that it's in Scorpio season is we're already speeding we're up this transformation. Yeah. So then this is going to be even like a bigger, faster, quicker mm -hmm. um, transformation process. And the fact that the the nodes, which the um, the nodes of the moon, 
are on the Taurus Scorpio eclipse axis. So the, so it's just that, so, and this, and it just happened. Um, it was in the Taurus, um, Scorpio axis last May, May and June is when we had our last batch of eclipses. So we can think about that, about what happened then. And it's going to be around those same, same themes this time around. Okay. <laughs> and I know, <laughs> super interesting. So, oh, and the reason why, so it's always around, so the eclipse axis is always going to be whatever sign that the moon and the, or whatever sign that the sun and the moon are in. But um, what I was going to say, why it is so significant for me personally is because my nodes are also on the Taurus Scorpio eclipse axis. Oh, interesting. So I have my north node in Scorpio and my south node in Taurus. And right now it's the opposite where the north node is in Taurus and the south node will be in Scorpio. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> So it's going to be super, so anybody with Tori Scorpio placements, especially moon placements or um, nodal placements or any personal planets on the, in those placements, as far as Taurus and Scorpio are going to be like very, feel this the most. Okay. Just as a, um, so if, you've, if I have a rising in Taurus, will I feel yeah. that? Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Especially the rising because the rising is such a significant uh -huh you know, the biggest, kind of one of the biggest things that's like, I just did this. Um, I have to, I have to, I have to show you still the, uh, membership model for the studio that mm -hmm. we're going to be, I'm going to put out by Monday. Oh, wow. And, um, and I had it as, so it's three different tiers of membership that include like so many different offerings that the studio is, um, that the studio has to offer that I feel like people don't know about yet. So I'm just mm -hmm. trying to put them in like neat little, um, pre-packaged packages and uh and I was like well the sun and I wanted to name them different things yeah. I wanted to name them the sun and the moon and the rising and I was like well the sun should be like the biggest the biggest the most encompassing right and then the moon should be like maybe the least and then the rising and I was like no it should totally be the opposite that it's the sun is the is the least um committed tier mm. the moon is like the is kind of in the middle and then the e rising is the most committed the ones that want to be the most challenged because rising to me when you can really embody I mean they say the planet that rules your rising is the planet that rules your life so if your rising is Taurus and mm -hmm. Venus is the uh, ruler of Taurus then that Venus planet is the most important I think we talked about that in your mm -hmm. reading too yeah, that yeah. your benefic is Venus because mm -hmm. you have a nighttime chart yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so Venus is a huge important planet for you in this life like the venetian themes will com continue to always always come up okay and um and my rising is leo so that means my what do they call i think they call it the the ruler of your chart is that planet so mm -hmm. in that planet it would be the sun mm -hmm. so um so that's, that's really interesting yeah. yeah too which in so many ways, it makes sense, but it's so, it's so yeah. weird how things make sense, right? But like, oh, you're like, wait, is it making sense like after the fact? Just it because I'm so like, for a minute, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, is it like what is? I don't know if it's like confirmation bias or something, but yeah. you know, like yeah. when you're like, oh, okay, wow, I can see I how that makes sense. And then I go home and read all about Venus. Ah! That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I know yes. and then you'll yeah and so the more you look at it, the more you focus in on it the more you can relate to it yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. um yeah so that's that's super interesting yeah. so anyways so so those eclipse portals are huge and um and so it's not it's never too early to think about what was happening in the last eclipse time last spring <laughs> last May uh, that was an I intense can't believe time if it's too. April. Yeah. I think it's April, May, not May, June, if I'm mistaken. It was so April, May. It was last April, time. May. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So last April, May, what stuff was brought up, and then it's either coming back up, like to be wrapped up again this time around, yes. or, um, or, yeah, and then it's going to happen one more time next spring. Oh my god! So gosh. in the Taurus Scorpio axis. Yeah. Okay. So we're just like right in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Yeah. Ah! Well, <laughs> it's bringing up the same stuff yeah. for you. A hundred percent. So interesting. All the things in, uh, with relationship specifically for me. So yeah. 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 That's super interesting. So, um, and then we have, so those are the full moon. So the full moon and it's the new moon and, or no, sorry, the first eclipse, which is the partial solar eclipse is the new moon. New moon in Scorpio, it's a portal for change. And then the second eclipse is the full moon in Taurus. It's the uh, 
total lunar eclipse on November 8th. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have that two week period, which they consider, they call it like the, um, the dragon's tail. Have I ever told you about that Mm -hmm. or talked about that? In I think it's in Vedic astrology. There is, um, it's the, it's called the Rahu and Kitu or something like that. It's the mouth and the tail of the dragon. So when you're going in through the eclipse portal way, which is the space between the two eclipses, it is like a time warp as far as you can't really, um, like time speeds up, time slows down. There is, uh, lots of weird things that kind of happen and you're not sure if it's actually really happening or if it's just in your mind there's just a little bit like murkiness Mm -hmm. it's almost like a digestion that's happening that's how they consider Mm. it like going from the mouth to the tail and then when it comes out the other side um it will be like some there will be like a really great like moment of clarity or change or realization or something so that is something to consider. So that's between the lunar that's between the new moon and the full the new moon. moon and the full moon. Okay. Yeah. Just in general, not because it's no, because the of the lunar. eclipses. Oh, got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's all yeah, just in general, there's always that kind of portal way, yeah. but during eclipse time, like between the two eclipses, it's like magnified it. like okay. a thousand. Okay. So Yeah, I remember last year it feeling like a two-week period of, like, weird time stuff happening, time warping. Right. You know, time being something that is actually, like, malleable, Mm -hmm. Um, like, really feeling that. I can't remember specifically. I'm going to have to look back at that Mm -hmm. time period between April and May. But I bet you, yeah, I bet Mm -hmm. you it's a lot of the same. It was, you know, that was the time where it was, like, right before I had actually made the decision to reopen or move the studio do you remember was it do you remember we're like we'll we'll be at the new location in two weeks exactly that's exactly (laughs) like april 30th or something april 15th oh yeah april 15th (laughs) i know and so and i went through like a massive change of mind yeah during that time as far as like what i was gonna gonna do do and how i was gonna do it and um yeah Mm -hmm. because i didn't even know that was a huge that was a huge period of change for sure. I did yeah. not know. And so that's what I have to continue to remind myself because that was very recent. Yeah. That yeah. was only six months ago. It's hard to believe. Like as far as, and even the studio being reopened, it's been very recent. Yeah. It's only been like a few months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. already in like that space of like, like I have this um, uh, business coach now and she's always like every week, every week she's like, you have to celebrate like we always begin she's like super positive you have to celebrate your wins you know you celebrate like whatever and I realize I don't do that yeah like I just don't do that enough you know but uh and one of the things that she's been reminding me of it's like it's only been a few months since you've moved the studio and reopened the business you know like fully yeah yeah um compared to how long you did it before right yeah so Whereas, like, I kind of feel like I've been doing it forever, but I'm like, it hasn't been actually that long. It really hasn't been that long. Yeah. July, right? (laughs) End of June was when we reopened. End of June was when we reopened. Yeah. 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 Like the soft reopening. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So much has happened this year, it feels like. I know. So much has happened this year. (laughs) Okay. So moving on with more of the monthly astrology for this season, for Scorpio season for um, 2022. So the dates are specifically October 23rd to November 21st. Mm -hmm. So it's most of November. It definitely covers Halloween. And um, the themes are death and rebirth, shadow, transformation. Um, The main things that are happening are those eclipses. Mm -hmm. So the eclipses are only, only happen... Um, every six months or so, and they happen in the same uh, axis way three times in a row, and then they switch to the next axis way. Got it. Okay. So the last one before last spring, it was a Gemini Sagittarius one, and um, so it moves backwards because this is now Taurus, and so the next one will be in Aries and Libra. As far as after, so next year at this time we'll have an Aries Libra um, eclipse season. And um, and then the, the other big thing for Scorpio season is this Mars retrograde. So this Mars retrograde is going to be happening at the end of October, October 30th. And uh, it's a Mars retrograde in Gemini. Um, this is huge. Any of the personal planets. So there's personal planets. There's 
the moon, obviously, mm -hmm. and then there's Venus, and then there's Mercury, and then there's Mars. Those are considered the personal planets because they're the closest to us as far as in proximity of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And then we have some of the outer planets. The outer planets would be considered Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, Uranus, like um, Chiron is all the way out there. And so those outer planets would be more representative of um, larger themes that affect more of the culture or of the collective. I see. Okay. So anytime we're talking about um, like all of the things that are significant would be like on a personal level is what I'm going to be mostly referring to. And that's mostly just the movements between the moon. Moon, are mo moon movements are what I talk about in the weekly astrology. Mm -hmm. But then Mercury, because of the Mercury retrograde stuff, and that's like the next planet that's closest to us, Venus and Mars. So <clears throat> Mercury representing our communication, Venus representing our, our love, our relationships, our heart, and Mars representing action action and movement forward and yeah. physicality and so <clears throat> uh, and it's the it's like the red you know the was it it's, i've been i've heard it being referred to as like the red it's like the red king it is considered like the red planet because mm. it does look red when Shade you look of, at it yeah. up in the sky yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but somebody who is very impulsive or quick to anger like this is the archetype of mars mm. um yeah somebody very you know just dominating and um and warrior, you know, kind of energy, like pushing forward. Yeah. So, of course, you could see the gift in the shadow of that. Yeah. And so when Mars goes into retrograde, so I have Mars in Gemini. So I do, too. Actually, I have Mars in Gemini. I have Mercury in Libra. Yeah. So I have Mars in Gemini. So that is about... Um, you know, Gemini is a lens of thinking, of communication, of mm -hmm. thought, of how we process information. And so Mars um, having that type of like archetype of like the warrior, it's kind of like how we look at ideas and information is like, can it be, it can sometimes feel very black and white. It can sometimes be like maybe come out as aggressive or maybe the shadow of aggression, which is repression, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, so there's different things to look at with Mars yeah. when it comes to um, um, the filter of communication and information mm -hmm. and logistics and details, which would be Gemini. But when Mars goes into retrograde, that's like all of that action of like moving forward, which would be like the gift of Mars, starts to feel like slows down, slows. starts to feel sl slightly sluggish. And so I forget how many days that this retrograde period is, but it's um, for Mars. Like, I mean, I, I want to say like something around 45 days or something like that, but it's going to be going in and out of retrograde. I know for a fact, um, all the way through next spring. So it's going to be in Gemini. It's going to be going in back and forth in Gemini, um, for the next like seven months or so. Okay. So, um, so that's like, so again, so when it goes into the retrograde period, it is, slowing down it is starting to become sluggish it's start hard to maybe take actions or th things take longer to get done mm -hmm. um you might not feel as motivated to do things there might be um you know something that changes in your physical routine that might need to that might slow down you know things mm -hmm. like that that's what so that's like a big thing that everybody's talking about as far as what's happening for um for october and for scorpio season is this mars retrograde that's on the 30th um but beginning the the Scorpio season, we have Saturn um, stationing direct. So right now we have a lot of planets that are in retrograde, which is what has kind of made things feel a little bit sluggish. And they're all starting to like slowly one by one start moving direct, mm -hmm. except for Mars. But um, but this um, but Mars is going to be doing Mars is doing the opposite, which is it's slowing down to move into its retrograde. So when the when they are switching from direct to retrograde, it's like a standing still type of a period. Mm -hmm. So there's like almost like a stagnation, you know, kind of a thing that's happening until and then slowly and slowly as we move further into Scorpio season, all of these plants are going to start going out of retrograde and there's going to start becoming more momentum. OK. Um, and so. We have that Saturn in Aquarius stationing retrograde on the 23rd, and it's been in Aquarius since June 4th. So um, Saturn in Aquarius is like the same thing that we've been dealing with this whole time as far as the um, Saturn Uranus um, information or um, energy of the push and the pull between the old and the new. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Saturn in Aquarius makes it seem like there's – very, you know, Saturn being the planet of boundaries, of 
um, of restrictions, of responsibilities, of things that remind us, you know, of like containers and, and where our limitations are. And like it being an Aquarius makes it just so that, um, this, way of like thinking like Aquarius is very outside of the box, like higher consciousness, like genius, like looking at the big picture type of a thinking. It's like, there's like a struggle there, you know, like Saturn doesn't necessarily love to be an Aquarius because it wants to stay the same. And Aquarius wants to, um, Aquarius energy is about ex trying Expanding, to expand yeah. those, um, those lines of conformity or of the sameness or of tradition even. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's still, it's still in Aquarius. It's just mm -hmm. starting to move direct now, meaning that there's going to be more of that, more of that Saturn energy. Um, and then on the 25th, we have solar eclipse. Um, 26, we have Mercury and Libra. Mercury and Libra trining Mars. So this Mercury trine Mars energy is this very um, harmonious energy between communication, information, and action and um and movement forward mm -hmm. so that's always like a good thing it's mm -hmm. usually um something to do with um having clear communication on how to move forward mm. on um what needs to be taken care of on you know d d making those choices or talking about those choices but de definitely making choices and then mm -hmm. mercury and libra square pluto on the 27th so a square, again, is a challenging aspect where there is some sort of um, resistance, you know, happening kind of. There's like a, a tension between um, Mercury and Pluto. And Pluto is, again, the planet of the underworld, of, um, of that, you know, the unconscious of the unseen. So there's going to be something where there's something that needs to be shown or seen that is um, probably not like, you know, when there's tension, it's usually a very challenging piece of information that gets like communicated that yeah. gets like, I don't know, something like, who knows? It's also like when we're talking just so general, it's right. like, it's like, I wa I'm like, I want some examples yeah. here. <laughs> and then we have the Mars retrograde on the 30th. And then on the, on the eighth, we have a sun Kazemi Mercury, which is a sun conjunct Mercury, which is when the sun and Mercury are in the same degrees, um, in the same sign. And so that's just like clarity all of a sudden a big you know clear understanding about something yeah. a big some sort of realization like the sun is like you know right in line it's like shining it's like right there next to um the planet of information and communication and then lunar eclipse on the 8th and then on the 15th we have venus trine jupiter which is a very very nice lucky aspect we just recently experienced that um and uh the trine again is harmonious and both jupiter and venus are benefics and so this is something beautiful something expansive something um really wonderful is mm -hmm. going to um be kicked off that day that is again on the 15th remembering though that venus will be in scorpio then so whatever that wonderfulness will probably have something to do with something really yeah, deep yeah okay you know and then um and then on the 16th we have mercury trying jupiter again trying is a great harmonious aspect jupiter is a very very lucky planet mercury trying jupiter there's some sort of like great big you know um lucky piece of information or something really optimistic will be shown to us or something will be something really nice will happen we can look for that on the 15th and 16th with Venus and Mercury trining Jupiter and then on the 21st which is the last day of Scorpio before we move into Sagittarius is Mercury conjunct Venus so conjunctions are very um um, are harmonious and, and great too. It's a coming together. So if we have a coming together of the planet of communication and information, um, then with the planet of romance and love and beauty, mm -hmm. then um, there's some sort of, you know, it's like a some something prob will probably um, be, you know, some sort of something beautiful within a relationship might happen. Mm. You know, that's how I would interpret it. Okay. But overall though, you know, as you know, so as the sun shifts into a sign, it's like slowly one by one the personal planets start to move into the sign as we go deeper and deeper into the season. Mm -hmm. And so that's why um I kind of look at it that the beginning of the season is still very like light energy, light. Um, like, so the beginning of Scorpio season will be very like light Scorpio energy. Whereas like, as we go deeper and deeper into Scorpio season and then with an enhancement with the eclipses, it's just going to be, it's going to be a really, really big, big month as we go further and further, further into it. Got it. Okay. 
So mm. this is why I think it's great to do some this shadow, shadow challenge for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and the shadow challenge, so just like all of the challenges, because I was just thinking about these challenges, and I think we talked about in Virgo season two when we started doing them again. It's like once you can start, these shadow challenges are showing you how to do something that you might not be used to doing, but that you can incorporate doing slowly on your own on a regular on basis. On a regular basis. Yeah. Not just during Scorpio. Season. Exactly. This stuff comes up all the time. All yeah. the time. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that's why I love how the seasons bring up these topics to focus on and talk yeah. about. But ultimately, these topics are prevalent in all, all of our lives all the time. So... um it's so it's just to become familiar with them. Mm -hmm. It's just like I'm I'm reading about archetypes. It's just like the planets and the signs and the, the archetype is the kind of umbrella that is a universal characteristic, mm -hmm. you know, that is timeless, you know, that it's like it everybody is familiar with. Yeah. Just because we're all human. Right. So the so all of these topics are topics that can that are all a part of us. So when we go through all the different themes through the astrological year, it's so great because you, we actually consciously can touch on, you know, intentionally touch on all these different aspects of ourselves, all different aspects of our psyche. Mm -hmm. And, and also really look at all these different archetypal energies within us. And so it's, it's just, you know, the process of even doing these things, um, looking at these astrological themes all throughout the year is like doing like shadow work to a certain extent mm -hmm. because it's shining light on the things that we don't normally think about. Right. Right. So if we're going to have like a focus on anything, I mean, if we were just to, I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like my mind is just completely wild. And if I don't control it, <laughs> like with like an intentional focus, like every day, if not moment to moment, then I will it feels like I will not get anything done and yeah. not know anything because I'll just be like so super spaced out. Yeah, you know? yeah totally. <laughs> so, um, so to me, this is why I am super drawn to astrology too, is that it does feel like it's something that I can really focus on that I can really get into. And, and it's not just an exploration of, of the stars, but it's so much, it's so much more about an exploration of yourself. Of yourself, yeah. right. And like your psychology and how you behave and all of the, um, like what drives your behavior, like especially with shadow work. I think it's so interesting when, you know, just my own personal experience recently, just like why I show up in certain ways or why I struggle with certain ways, things that I do. It's like you said, it's all unconscious stuff that it's like all these behaviors that I don't know where they necessarily came from. I mean, I know that it's all like childhood based, I'm assuming, but it's like, these are the things that lead our lives yeah. unless we look at them. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, we feel like we have no control, but we actually have a lot of control over this. Right. We just have to take the time to like, look inside ourselves, develop that self-awareness and be committed to healing. Yeah. Right? I mean, well, you think about it as like, I've got feel, I feel like I've really genuinely gotten to the point or at least opened myself to this perspective more and more is that we actually get to go through these challenges. We actually get to look at these things. We actually get to be triggered so that we can look at these things because think about people like, like I think about people's birth charts and how sometimes it's like all, it's all just so harmonious and easy and they're just going to be so lucky and blessed yeah. like this whole life. Right. And, and and people think like, oh, well, that's like a good chart or that I have like a nice, I have a good birth chart or whatever, or I was blessed with a certain thing. But to go through your entire life without experiencing any type of up and down or challenge or whatever, it's just it being just a vanilla great life is not necessarily the best scenario. No. So... I think, you know, this is how they explain like why we want to incarnate as human beings. Like there's a, um, there's like a spiritual, um, understanding. There's a spiritual philosophy about how the reason why we came to incarnate, um, and I really believe this into these physical bodies, into this realm of like restriction and time and space and, um, challenges and heartbreak and emotions and all of the things that we go through, fear and shadow, is because in the spirit realm, like just non-physical realm, 
there isn't any of that. Like there's no nuance. It's very like, you don't get to taste anything. You don't get to feel anything. You know, you're just kind of like living in, I mean, this is like from, uh, from listening to people who channel spirits and also people who have had near death experiences and they've come mm -hmm. back and talked about it or just like spiritual, um, woo woo stuff anyways that I love to listen to but supposedly and this is consistent information amongst like mediums and psychics and NDE survivors and um found also in texts you know in ancient spiritual texts is this idea that when you're in non-physical form everything is wonderful and great and beautiful it's just like love yeah so but when you only experience one note of something all of the time it's not necessarily the best experience mm. because you don't have a contrast. You, you also, you don't have a contrast to even know that that's a great experience. Sometimes like be having things be, be too easy is just, is not, should not be the choice. Yeah. Well, and doesn't that create a shadow in and of itself? Not, fr not from a non-physical standpoint, but like if you've just had everything like spoon fed to you your whole life, it's like, then don't you struggle with like, sense of entitlement like a really big ego I mean I don't know but it's like well that's the shadow that's actually the way that you describe somebody having an easy life is having their life being spoon-fed to them whereas that's not necessarily that might not necessarily be an easy life like that's actually that's like, like yeah. that's like a um interesting like projection about what it would be like I would imagine it to be but I know I hear what you're saying I would imagine it to be like somebody who doesn't come across any challenges, right? That's right. what you mean, right? That's like... Yeah, I guess that I was interpreting like an e I guess, yeah, I guess I am yeah. interpreting like a, a easy like birth chart to mean, yeah, like I'm, a, I'm attaching that to like specific things in a culture <laughs> that are yeah. like, like money and, yeah, yeah. you know, like all the things. Right. But, like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. No, yeah. okay. not at all. Because Go. somebody can have a really, really difficult, like, I mean, this is what they say about people who do have a lot of money are the ones that are most fearful yeah, of our most, most scarcity yeah. consciousness. Yeah. Are the most mm. fearful of not having it. Yeah. You know, so no, that's definitely, um, yeah, there's no, I mean, yeah, there's so many different interpretations or as, or as far as like judging what would be considered easy or harmonious yeah. versus not. And I'm, I guess the way that I'm coming at it is from thinking that if you don't have a life with any challenges whatsoever, like you're just constantly always feeling 100% great, that to me would be very, very like boring. Yeah. There's no yeah. growth there. Right. So, so then, but then if you take it even broader from a bigger perspective, the harmonious life would be to experience all of those challenges and ups and downs, but to really be able to see the gift in all of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the challenge is mostly that we most of us don't ever get to the point where we can actually appreciate the challenges mm -hmm. that we can actually appreciate the dark. Yeah. The, the shadow. Mm -hmm. And I see what you're saying. So it's like learning to appreciate the challenges as opportunities right. for transformation. Right. Mm -hmm. And evolution. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Versus if you have those challenges and you don't, and you're just blaming other people for them. Yeah. Or like, yeah. If you mm -hmm. don't, yeah, then, then, you then that's stuck. a very, very challenging life. Yeah. Or that's, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think like what would be considered harmonious. Well, harmonious actually implies like things are not very up and down. Like it's just very like even, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's not the evenness is not it's just like trying to like wash, you know, like I think about washing clothes or something. It's like you need the friction. Mm -hmm. You need the friction for things to otherwise you're just going to stay. I guess stay the same. You stay the same, which I was going to say stay dirty, but you could stay just stay the same. And then you don't even know if it's dirty or clean because you're just always the same. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But basically, that's that's. 
a lucky life is a, is which is how I, how I feel I have for sure is the ability to be able to see how the challenges are such gifts. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can all come to terms with that as just like a, a given, yeah. Then just imagine how much more energy we would have saved from groveling and resistance and yeah. <laughs> um blaming judging other and people judging and, yeah. <laughs> how much like like how how much energy we would save yeah right and we would just be able to actually direct that energy into growth, growth. and doing better things in our lives and, and yeah, service service and being contribution better for the people we love and, and yeah exactly yeah yep i know yeah. so Yeah. So that's why, that's why Scorpio season is such an opportunity Mm -hmm. because, and it can be either, it can be really bad or really good. You know, if you are not, and this is kind of like, it's showing the true colors then, you know? So if you just like, you don't know the true colors of a relationship until you actually go through conflict together. And so, you know, otherwise, I mean, would you rather have, and I guess some people would, and I think a lot of people exist in that, in that dynamic where it's just a comfortable, harmonious, boring, uninspiring, unintimate situationship (laughs) right? versus maybe that might something that might be a little bit more tumultuous and up and down and uncertain and coming back to certainty and coming back to connection, coming, separating it, you know, like maybe that that's way more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. That's way more interesting. And that creates so much more connection and that, but you have to be willing to risk that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So if you're too scared of, of losing something, then sometimes you just hold on too tightly and you can't ever actually enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Or even get the benefits of being in it. Right. Right. So that's what it is with Scorpio season. That's what it is with Scorpio themes. It's that you are going to be presented with an opportunity for transformation. Are you going to take it? Yeah. Or are you going to, I don't know, back resist. off, resist it. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the resistance will just dig you into a deeper hole. Yep. Yep. Whereas if you take it, Right. If you take on that challenge, if you face that fear, if you look at that shadow, then there's so much more can open can up for you. From, yeah. I mean, you'll be available for so much more life, basically. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So great, isn't it? So great. Yeah. And I mean, this is where the shadow challenge comes into play, where it's like you can really start to identify right. what your challenge is. Right, right. And so... Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, but it basically gives a framework for getting in touch with your shadow um, and some ways to work through it. So check it out. It's five days of doing some really deep work. And again, you can do this during Scorpio season, but basically this is just life work, right? I think that I do this kind of more. I mean, I think this really spurred it on when I had to like actually write it out, you know, when you sometimes you just, it seals it when you actually write it out. But so since then that really solidified the practice for me and Yeah, it's always about looking. It's just basically looking at all of your triggers. Triggers, exactly. Yep. And um, and looking at, um, and and really diving in, like taking some time just to figure it out where it comes from. It's so easy to just be like, oh yeah, the person pissed me off. Moving on to the next thing. Oh yeah, the person pissed me off again. (laughs) It's so easy to just like just. I mean, when you get tired of being completely irritated over the same thing over and over again, (laughs) then that's when some shadow work would benefit you. Right. right? When you start realizing that you're stuck in a pattern. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So when that's when there's something to look at. But so you can either be a pattern recognizer and recognize when it's a thing and it's something to look at, or you can just look at it right away and just being like, wow, why was I triggered by that? Like I'm trying to think about the last time I was triggered and it was just recent. It was over the weekend and I was triggered because I went back into an old way of thinking that this person was showing up in the same way that they did in the past. Mm. And so 
And then, which was so interesting, and I was observing myself while I was doing it, is that I, because I was triggered by the way, by thinking that they were showing up in the same way that they showed up in the past, I showed up in the same yes. way that I did in the past. Right. right. <laughs> and so I, then I was like, okay, wait, this feels familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here before. <laughs> so if you look at that, then... It's an opportunity. It was yeah. an opportunity to be like, whoa, what is this? Mm -hmm. Like, I can look at this and I can be like, why, 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 why? You yeah. know, when you just can keep going into the, until you find, deeper. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. until you figure out what it actually was yeah. and what it actually is. And what I figured out was that it was that it was triggering something from the past. I was reacting in the same way that I would have in the past. Yeah. And what it is that I actually wanted, why I was blaming that person for not, for not knowing that, then realizing that what it is that I actually wanted was what it is that I needed to do, mm, which exactly. is communication. Yes. So Gosh, then, <laughs> then when you realize what it is that you need to do, it literally puts the ball back in your court and you become so much more empowered yeah. because you know, then you have the ability to change the situation. You don't need right. to be waiting for somebody else to change right right and yeah. and it did it Good. totally changed the situation because of my realization that I wanted communication and so therefore I was more communicative and it completely changed the dynamic it worked. yeah yeah that's great that's so, so great. so yeah looking at your triggers or the what they say the triggers as your teachers um treat Treat the triggers as your teachers. There's like a, it's like the five T's or something. Uh. I read that in a book. And then, um, yeah. And getting to the bottom of it. Getting to the bottom of it. Yeah. yeah. Like why? And if it's something that's really deep, which it totally can be as far as, um, you know, trauma from childhood or, you know, some sort of deep unhealed emotional wound, mm -hmm. then you just got to go in and you got to look at that. Then you know at least what to look at. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know at least what kind of healing that you might need to do. Um, you know what to talk to your therapist about, you know? Right. It's like I always do like 15-minute alarm before my therapy session. I'm like, make a list of everything right. that I want to <laughs> talk about so that we're not wasting any time. We're just getting right to it. Right. And, um, you know, so you bring them with the information to help you process and work through things. And that's – that makes all the difference. Yeah, it really does. And I, I think it's like just having that self-awareness. I heard it said too, that, you know, that you're starting to like heal your shadow or like really integrate yourself once you are judging less, right? Like, yeah. it's just like all of a sudden it's like the thing that used to trigger you no longer bothers you. Exactly. Or even if it's just like a little less, you might still get triggered a little bit, but it's like, at least Progress. you have the awareness around You're, it. You have the awareness around it, right? Yeah. That's a step. So it's not, sometimes it takes a, a while to yeah. like process this and heal the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing that everything is a, is a little step in the right direction mm -hmm. has helped me a lot too. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. Every little yeah. step. Yeah. Every little even light of awareness that is, that is, you know, every little point of like expanded awareness is a step. Yep. Yep. And yeah, the awareness of the shadow, number one, da, 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 da. Right. So yeah, yeah, the goal is to eventually, I mean, the goal is to go through it. Mm -hmm. The goal is the journey, but eventually you do get to a point where, um, you do feel lighter and you do feel more empowered and you do feel like you have a little bit more agency and direction on like an, and you are able to manifest things faster too, mm -hmm. because you're not standing in your own way, or at least you're, you're aware of what you're, what is blocking you. Right. Right. And that's like, I mean, that's like, and that information is like gold because yeah. so many people are like, I don't know what is it's going just on. Unconsciously you know? operating through life. I'm yeah. just like consistently like, hitting this wall or this yeah. ceiling and who and have no idea why. Right. Yeah. And the, or like constantly being a victim. Right. Exactly. Just constantly. Yeah. And that's like, I mean, that to me is a miserable way to it's a hard exist. Way to live. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Constantly be the victim. But yeah. we oh my gosh, so many of us are in that so space. Many of us are, yeah. Yeah. So so right. shadow work challenge for sure. Um, we have a shadow meditation that is um, gets released during Scorpio season, but it's always available on the online studio on Heartbeat to Go. Um, we have some shadow. We have a shadow coaching sheet that walks through this too. Some journal prompts to really help you get to know your shadow a little bit better. Yeah. Um, 
That's great. And then we have the water. We have the water and we have the Scorpio calendars. wellness calendars. Yeah. The Scorpio wellness calendar and the water fitness calendar. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. yeah. And what's so exciting because we are going to make this happen is that starting as an offering for the beginning of the year, beginning of January for the new year, we're going to have a compilation of all of our seasonal offerings in like one big, uh, one year workbook. So you can work ahead. You can, you know, go through different sections. This is how I am envisioning it. Mm -hmm. This is like a brand new idea, (laughs) but I'm envisioning that you can either look ahead and do things that you want to do that have to do with that season but it might not be in that season or you can just go through it season by season Mm -hmm. and be guided on all the different things that we talk about that um we we release every season but this will be in one big workbook compilation so um i just love that kind of idea of really having your year of work right there (laughs) in one big workbook for you right (laughs) A self work feels so good to start with Capricorn too, right? Oh my gosh, yes, totally, <laughs> yeah. exactly. The new year, Capricorn, yeah. getting our goals set, right. um, and then yeah, moving through the whole year, and yeah. that'd be so great too because then when we're talking about on our podcast and when we're talking about on social media, um, it can be you guys can follow along either with the workbook or at least you'll know like where to reference on the website as far as um, following along with the information. Also, be able to look ahead. Yep. Also, be able to preview or review what you just went through you know a lot of opportunity for processing I think is is beneficial as much yeah yeah as much as possible (laughs) with the processing for sure Um, okay great well thank you so much for all of this yeah Uh, we'll be back next month with Sagittarius yes and which will be is just like a big leap out of the depths when we move into Sagittarius season oh good and Sagittarius themes yeah yeah All right. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of the Heartbeat to Go podcast. If you like this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Learn more about Heartbeat to Go over on our Instagram or Facebook at Heartbeat to Go. That's the number two. And sign up for a free seven day membership at heartbeattogo.com. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, remember that it's always possible to transform through your challenges.